before we get going with the video, I would like to take a moment to say thanks to my patrons because I wouldn't be able to keep doing this without you. So thank you so much for all your support. But also like to say thanks to Richter for his tier four sub this month, and special thanks to James Bond for his tier five sub this month. In this lecture, we are going to make our fox immortal after he takes damage. Right now, we are able to walk into our enemy multiple times and then just die. We would like to make him immortal for a while after we take damage so you can get out of danger. For example, if you jump into an enemy, you should be able to get out of there without, before you die. Um, and to do that, we need to make him immortal for a little while. And we can do that by going into our player stats. In here, we need to add a new property called as a bool called is alive. Or not alive, sorry, is uh, immortal. So this bool is going to determine if we are immortal or not. So as you can see, this one should be enabled the first time we take damage and it should be disabled the second time. Um, uh, or not the second time, but after a while, after we've taken damage, it should be uh, disabled again. So first of all, we can go into our player and here we can say, let's go to our start here. We can say stats dot is immortal false so we're not immortal when we start the game of course and uh, then we need to make sure that whenever we take damage we need to make sure that we can't do that if we are immortal so we need to go to our uh, player actions and find take hit and right here we need to make an if statement so if player dot is immortal uh, dot stat sorry is immortal well, if we're not immortal, then we do all these things. So right now we've already put in something that will make us unable to take damage when immortal is true. For example, if we go back here and change this to true, then now we're not able to take damage anymore because we have put around our take hit that, well, if we are mortal, we are not going to be able to take a hit. So let's see here if my computer wants to run this. There we go. Let's see here. See, now I'm unable to take damage because I'm immortal. However, um, we would like to make some kind of indicator. I'm just going to put this back to false. So we need to make us immortal as well at some point. And where do we do that? Well, we need to make a, uh, what is it called? An I enumerator or a coroutine that will take care of this. So in, in actions, we can make a new private I, I enumerator called immortality so this one is going to say well when we become immortal we say player that's stats that is immortal true and then we would like to yield return new wait for seconds wait for seconds how long are we going to wait well um the player needs some kind of immortality time i guess so um let's go to the player uh, player stats actually let's go up here and make a private pool for immortality time and serialize that so we can indicate from the inspector how long time we need to be model and then we right click quick action and encapsulate this field so we can go back here Oops, to our immortality and say we want to wait for the player that stats that immortality time so this is how long we are going to wait and what did i actually do did i make it into a bool yeah it needs to be a um not a bool but it should be a float because it's a time so we can also go up here and say that our immortality time here is a float then we jump back and now you can see that we are able to set that. So we make ourselves immortal. We wait for the immortality time to stop. And then we say player.stats that is immortal false. Okay. So now we have set that up. Where do we need to call this? Well, we need to call this somewhere where we are taking damage, I guess. So we can do it and take it up here and uh, where do you want to do it? Want to do it somewhere in here? Remove alive and everything. So let's actually just say player dot start coroutine. 
I want to start the immortality routine. Yeah. So how long does he need to be immortal for? Well, I don't know what it is in other games, but I think three seconds would be kind of okay. So I'm going to take and jump into my scene here and find my player and find the immortality time and put it to three. So now when we take damage, we can only take damage once and then again after three seconds. So you can see if I go in here, I take damage, but it doesn't take damage yet. Not until I am out, not immortal anymore, as you can see. So that's all well, but we are not able to see that he's immortal. So we need to do something um, that will indicate that this fox is immortal right now. And to do that, we can actually just make him blink or something. I think that's um, a good way to do that. So we need to have a reference to all the sprite renders on the player. And we need to enable and disable them for a while. Um, to make them blink. So how do you do that? Because if we take our player and look here, well, if we disable the whole like rig here or this sprite render, um, that will actually work because it's the whole sheet actually. So let's actually do that. Um, I'm not so sure it will disable the gun though. So let's just try here. I just want to see. So if I pick this up and I pause this. And let's see here. Let's not maximize on play. Um, where's the game? There's the game. There we go. Okay. So if I take out my gun and select the brick here and disable this, the gun is still going to be visible. So we need to make sure that we also have our gun um, selected for blinking so that he also blinks with the gun in his hand and the other weapons, of course. Um, okay, so to do that, we need to make some kind of collection. So let's go to our player uh, components. Let's see here. Uh, player components. And inside the player components, we should create some kind of sprite renderer array. So let's do that. Let's make it private. Sprite renderer. Sprite. Sprite renderers. There we go. So the reason that we're using sprite renderer is because, yeah, this is sprite renderer, so that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to civilize this. And we're also going to make a property for this so that we can access it from other classes. That's fine. Um, what else are we going to do? Well, with this done, we can actually jump back into our uh, player stats. Sorry, not players, that's player actions there. And in here we can make a new code team that will be called by take it. Let's make a private I enumerator blink. And blink is simply going to make us blink as we are in model. So while player dot stats dot sorry dot player stats dot is immortal. Well, as long as we are mortal, we are going to run through everything inside our layer dot components dot sprite renderers. We run through all of them, and then we say, well, layer dot components dot sprite renderers position i. We're going to enable them or set them to false actually to disable them. And after we've done that, we will wait. Return new wait for seconds. We will wait for 0.1 second. This value can be adjusted depending on how fast you want it to blink. And then we're going to do the exact same thing as up here. And then we're simply going to enable everything. And then we're going to wait for another 0.1 second. So as long as we're mortal, this is what we're going to do. We're going to blink as long as we're mortal. Um, so let's jump back to Unity. And let's see if we can select our player. And then we need to find our um, sprite renderers, components, and sprite renderers there. We need to put everything there. So the rig go here. And then we need to open up our weapons. Let's see here. Was it left? Ah, uh, should be right though. Right, right, right. So the weapons go here as well. Just add a couple more. So we take the sword and we take the gun here. 
So now this should also be blinking. Okay, so we have the blink method here, the blink, um, what's it called, the enumerator uh, coroutine. Why do we need to call it? Well, we need to call it when we get immortal. So inside immortal immortality, we say start coroutine. Uh, so player does start coroutine, I guess. Yeah, there it is. And we want to start blink. And then we can set it to false at some point here. Um, now I'm thinking that it might, uh, it is going to finish this no matter what. So it's not like it's going to jump out when it's, when it's invisible. So let's try and see if this made it work or if we need to make a few adjustments. Um, I think I set everything. So let's see here. I can pick up my gun. I can go in here and take damage. Now you can see I'm blinking as long as I'm mortal. And I'm not immortal anymore, so I can start going into this one. So, as you can see, it's actually pretty fast, though, um, when it's blinking. And it's also blinking when I'm dying, so maybe I don't want that. And I'll open Blender. <laughs> it's like there. So, um, I'm thinking this point 0.1 is maybe a bit too fast. Try point 0.3. Point um, 3. And what else? Um, I don't want him to blink when he's dead, though. Um, so take it here, life is there, body hurt, here is die. So it's an if and an if. Um, so actually this one. Mm, I could put an extra if statement here. Could also put it out here, say if. Stats that lives. Uh, oh, actually, I can do this. Copy this, paste it here. So if I'm alive, then I would like to become immortal. I guess. So I guess we could make this prettier. Uh, I just can't be bothered right now. You can do it yourself. Maybe if you find a nice way, you can also paste it in the comment section so other people can see how it. You made it work. Well, that's very slow. <laughs> it's very slow. Um, so point three is a bit too much. Point two. Oh, maybe point one five and eight or something. Fifteen. Let's try this. So again, this is just something you can adjust. Ideally, we could make a variable and adjust it while it's going on, so we can see how it looks. Um, so let's see, I have the gun, let's put the gun in the hand. Yeah, so everything actually blinks here. Take damage. And die without taking damage, or without uh, blinking. Um, so I saw one thing we need to fix in the next video, I guess, because if I am walking here, so now it's actually not playing the herd animation, as you can see. So we need to make sure that it does that even though it's like blinking. Um, but I think we can, okay, I guess we could also do it here. I just need to figure out what is going on. I think the problem could be with the animator. So if you open up, if you select the rig and go to animator, select the body and take body herd and put the speed down to one instead of two. I think we might be able to see it because it might be so fast that we can't see it when it's blinking. Now you can see that we can actually see it now when it takes damage while uh, while blinking and then he dies. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.